Hello! Hi guys! Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> so today we are talking about how mom spends $80 a month on groceries. Now, we were talking and actually Mike and I spent 400 for four of us. Yeah. So and two teenage that's two teenage boys two and then teenage MA. boys. So even though that's a good job, mother. <laughs> <laughs> it's really not that big of a deal. No. I don't know why people keep thinking it's this big that big, you know, a big yeah. to do or whatever. So um anyway, so this is just how we live. Mm -hmm. And this is why Okay, a little little can self promotion. Touch, don't touch, touch, touch my three hundred fifty dollars tomato. To <laughs> she you hasn't been let me touch. touch. She hasn't let me touch the tomato since we got in here. My three hundred and fifty dollar <laughs> tomato. <laughs> I had to be honoring and touch it. <laughs> this is why we wrote Dining on a Dime Volume One because we get this question all the time, and this is not hard and it's not rocket science. Dining on a Dime Volume 2 and then Gluten-Free, Dairy-Free. Guys, my grocery bill did not go up uh -uh. when I started eating gluten-free, dairy-free. Oh. It, it didn't go up. I was going to say with inflation. Mine my grocery gotten... bill has not gone up with inflation. Yeah, mine it, has it really has it. They're 25% off right now for um, everyone who would like to go to livingonadime.com and grab those. So we are going to be talking about that today because... Um, you know, it's, it really is actually quite easy. So I guess I will let you go ahead, mom, and well, have fun. <laughs> I'm going to start what I'm she start banning people right you know away. What she says it's not, it's not that hard because what it is, it's a matter of, uh, learning habits and learning certain ways of doing things. It's yeah. just like cleaning your house. You get in the habit of doing something. And you don't even think about it anymore. And you, you know, you can adjust and adapt. And that's kind of what we, we have done. We've done it for so long now. If the prices go up, we just know how to re-adapt and resituate. Before I give my list of what I actually eat uh, and show you what I actually eat, I was going to give you these tips. There's what, five or six tips that are for anybody. And I kind of hate giving my numbers and what I eat just because I don't want you necessarily copying me in one sense. It's, I don't want you to think you have to eat what I eat or you have to buy the same types of stuff or even spend the same amount of money. You all are different. You have different size families. You live in different countries. Uh, you have different medical needs and things like that. So most of you probably won't be able to do anything near what I do, but this is to give you some ideas of what you can take for what you need and apply them to. Yeah. And let me say, Frankie, it's so good to see you. I oh, hi, where Frankie. You are. I am so glad to see you on here again. Um, we now, worry about you guys. We don't see you. Only. Yes. Actually, have you heard from Nancy Graver lately? I haven't heard no, from I haven't. her. Nancy, let us know how you're doing if you're watching. Um, and a good... We get this asked all the time. How much should I spend for my family on groceries? <clears throat> a good frugal price is $100 per person per month. It's just a good rounded frugal price, okay? If you have more and you want to get more expensive meats or whatever, then go ahead So and spend more. But about $100. Lella, let me just say real quick, guys. If the power gets turned off... We will come right back. Mike is testing a snowblower and last time it burnt, it blew the breaker and we're on the same breaker. So <laughs> anyway, uh, he's working on that right now. So just if we go, just hang on and we will come back with you guys. Okay. All right. Go ahead, mom. What are your tips? Well, and so these things I'm going to say is for, you know, like I said, for everybody, whatever size family you have, it's one or two or 10 kids or whatever, these tips. And we always do these tips because it's more important to do the tips than to actually copy everything that I do. So first of all, the number one thing, I didn't know which one of these two to put number one, but the number one thing I find that people have a problem with in saving money on their groceries, believe it or not, is drinks. And I know you maybe think, well, I don't <coughs> hardly spend money on anything. But I saw a woman, she had a special rack to hold all of her um, pop. She had Gatorade. She had uh, 
oh, bottled water. And I was counting up for, it was like three people or something in her family. And she had $40 worth of drinks for uh, just one week for the family. You don't $30? Need, yeah, it was at least $40. $40. It was I was going to say, that's it. Yeah, I, wow. well, it was less. I mean, I, I did the lowest part, lowest number. I usually do lower just to cover things. Because why, yeah. why I was questioning was it seems like a lot of people spend seventy to hundred dollars. Well, she a said week on she got her on... week's groceries, so I assume that's yeah. what it was for. So it may have been less. Oh, I don't a know. week, not a month. No, not a month. Oh yeah, forty dollars. Yeah, I was thinking about one hundred to one hundred fifty a week. Yeah, one hundred fifty. And month. if you look, most of you that drink this type of stuff, you'll find that one third of your grocery bill probably is for drink mm -hmm. items. Yep. And you know, like you get the. Um, you get the creamer for the coffee besides the coffee and you get the mm -hmm. tea and you got the sugar and you buy the cool powdered Kool-Aid. And then you have, Oh, now the big thing is the vitamin drinks and, B, and the caffeine drinks and the caffeine drinks. And people think it's going to make them healthier. And, I better and the not, juice drinks, Dave bought those today. Mom's yeah. Like juice drinks and Gatorade and, you know, and then you buy uh, what, chocolate to put in for chocolate milk. I mean, the juice, milk, mm -hmm. I could just go on and on with the list of drink things that people, so if you drink water, it'll help. And one thing, I don't know why it seems like everybody thinks they need Gatorade now or the, you know, the to um, when they deplete their electrolytes yeah. or whatever, that's a big thing. Unless you're a teenage boy in August on the football field, practicing for four hours, the chances of you needing to replace your electrolytes are very slim. Don't jump on this bandwagon. It's just another bandwagon that everybody thinks if they work out for 20 or 30 minutes, they have to have a bottle or two of Gatorade to replenish themselves. And you've got to be careful because you can overdo on all of this stuff. Plus, all of these things have calories. And I'm going to be mentioning maybe a couple of different things. But people do not realize the taking a whole bunch of vitamins, doing all these drinks, these energy, the vitamin drinks, all that you're adding calories. And I did a thing. I can't go into it today, but I did a thing. The obesity problem is not from corn syrup. It's not from all the fructose stuff. People are drinking this kind of stuff and doing the excess and eating healthy. The um, coconut milk, the uh oat milk, the almond milk, people don't realize that a lot of those have more calories. Those things that they're substituting now have way more calories than the regular stuff that they're substituting for. And that's why people are starting to have a weight problem. So, so cut out the drinks, try to get down to water and all this stuff do slowly. You can't tell the kids tomorrow, we're not drinking anything else ever again, but water. You may have to ease into it a little bit slowly. And then start trying to do it for two solid weeks and that'll make it a habit and it'll be easier for you to do. And just do one of the things maybe a, every week or two off the list that I'm going to give you. Becky says one week, one week years ago when I emptied my cart to the cashier conveyor, I realized half of it was drinks. I cut <gasps> back right then and there. Isn't that interesting when you find out the juice and the milk and stuff? People let the kids drink that instead of drinking it for nu nutrition. They let them drink it for water when they're thirsty. Although she and says that, and today my cart was half full. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we were like out of all the milk, and then Dave got him a special, you know, the naked juice things, and then he got him a Red Bull, and and I had my coconut milk and my almond creamer <laughs> and but see, regular milk for Jack. <laughs> But you see, it really, when you get rid of those drinks, you'd be appalled at how many you're doing. Even when you go out to eat, everybody orders these large pops of coffee. I, I always order water. And so your bill goes up higher just in that alone when you go out to eat. The next tip is use your leftovers. I know we've talked about this, but it's like up there with drinks, the two are in competition with being important. And I, you really have to start using up your food. If the food prices are going to be getting higher, you're going to have to use every little bit that you buy. And I know we get all the time, my husband won't eat leftovers. My kids won't eat leftovers. But we're talking about thinking of ways, and you're going to have to use your mind a little bit and 
think about this. We're talking about using leftovers, not if you have roast beef, potatoes, and carrots for dinner, you don't warm that same thing up for three days in a row. That's not what we're talking about doing. If you make roast beef, what you do is you take that, you serve it with roast beef with potatoes and carrots the first night. Then you take part of it, and the next day for lunch, you slice it up, and you'll have it in a sandwich with mayonnaise and lettuce for lunch, roast beef sandwiches. The third night, you take it and you shred it up into barbecue beef sandwiches with maybe jello and corn on the cob or potato chips or something like that, hash browns or whatever. And the thing is with the barbecue beef, beef, that flavor and that texture and everything is totally different from the roast beef you had the night before. So your family won't mind it that much. Then you take the last of the roast beef the next day and you may just have a few little pieces of shredded up pieces and take the gravy from the, I usually make gravy whenever I do a roast, I make gravy up and take the gravy from the first night and add the pieces of roast to that gravy, put a piece of bread on a plate with the gravy and the roast beef, and you've got another totally different meal. That's from one roast, and that's using every little speck of leftovers that you have, you know. Mm -hmm. Then let's say you have tacos one night. There's four of you in the family. You have tacos. The next day, you've got just a little bit of shredded lettuce or, you know, a reasonable what, three cups, four cups of shredded lettuce. And then you've got maybe a quarter to a half a cup of tomato. (laughs) I had to do that to ask for (laughs) tomato. And so you have the little tomato, you have a little bit of um, cheddar cheese left and about half a cup of hamburger left. And then two taco shells. Well, you can't have tacos again with just two taco shells and four people. So what I would do is break those two tacos, put it all together in a bowl, break the taco shells up into bite-sized pieces, toss it, and you have taco salad then that next night. You're using up every little tiny bit by doing that. Tina says, my family refuses refuses to to eat leftover salts all up to me. No wonder I'm overweight. Stop making so much food. That was going to be my next yeah. point. If you're Just having start making smaller portions. Yeah, I was going to put that. That's what was going to be my next thing is I if, apologize for jumping. Ahead that's there. fine, because I was going to say that next too. Um, if you're cooking for one or two, we have more people say, I don't know how mm-hmm. to cook for one or two. And I watch these gals that have maybe one person for herself or for her and her husband get out a big chicken fryer. They get a big big Dutch oven out and they make stew or they make vegetable soup or mash, you know, make stuff in these big pots because that's what they're they're used to. So stop cooking so much. The best thing you can do if there's one or two of you at home to change your cooking habits. And this has helped so many people doing this is buy you a little six to eight inch frying pan. Just a little six, eight inch that holds two fried eggs in it. That's all you need. And then a saucepan that holds four cups or a one quart saucepan. Do that. And then I have an eight inch to nine inch cake pan. And in the cake pan, I'll make stuff like lasagna. That's all the bigger pan I make of lasagna is just enough to put in that little cake pan. Or, you know, I was cheese enchiladas, I'll put in my little tiny cake pan. And so start using smaller cooking utensils and it'll change everything. And if you have more than two people in your family and you keep eating leftovers or having leftovers, cut down. You can cut a roast in half. You don't have to freeze cook it, it later all. for lunches. Or freeze it later. You can freeze it later if you need to, but you can cut a roast in half. You don't have to cook the whole roast. You can cook. I never, ever cooked, never had leftover chicken because I cooked four pieces when it was the four of us. I would cook as each one piece. If you have a husband that works outside a lot, like a farmer or on roads or something like that, maybe fix him two pieces. But the rest of you have one piece of chicken, you know. And so start doing it. I want you to think, okay, I have a lot of leftovers. What do you do about it? Don't cook so much. You can cut recipes down. And I get this question on the website all the time. It's only two of us. How do I cut this recipe down? And it's a, it's a four piece chicken 
with a sauce to put on it. Okay, you made it before for four people with four pieces of chicken. And you're saying, how do I cut it down for two of us? You just do two pieces of chicken and cut the rest of the recipe in half. Just cut these recipes in half. Am I saying? I'm trying not to spit out my tea because I'm like, this is such common sense. <laughs> well, I know. I feel stupid. I'm sorry if we don't want to offend you guys, but but really, guys, the, what I'm trying to you're do making is it way to, harder than you it needs have to, be. to. We've been doing stuff on prepping, and yeah. you've got to start using your mind in this area. The more you use it, sorry. the easier, uh, the quicker the stuff will come. You'll start coming up with, up with ideas of your own. It's like anything else. When I first started sewing, you know, I could just copy the basic stuff and do it. So it's not like we're, we're not, she's not really laughing at you, but it is, you know, we're, it is kind of frustrating. But if you're just learning, but you, the more I did the sewing, the more I figured out how to fix my mistakes and be a little more creative. And so the more you, you've got to just practice this and come up with. Well, you and know, like Jennifer I, says, cutting in half does not work for spices. Yes, it does. Yeah. Instead of one teaspoon, you use a half a teaspoon. Half a Instead teaspoon. of a half a teaspoon, you use a quarter of a teaspoon. Instead of a quarter of a teaspoon, you use a sprinkle. You know That's what? That's all you do. And people say, well, the recipe calls for one egg. How do I cut an egg in half? Okay. This is a little Tupperware thing I have. It's exactly one quarter of a cup. I broke my egg in here, whipped up the oak yolk just a little bit just to get it mixed in with the white, and I poured it. There's a line right on here that says is half of it. I poured that egg out into my cake recipe because I only made a half a cake, and I used a half an egg. The rest of the egg, I put it back in the refrigerator till the next day if I needed a half an egg for something the next day, or I put it in with scrambled eggs if I was going to have scrambled eggs. I'd make one egg and add this in for scrambled eggs with the other egg. So think of ways to do this. You just need to cut everything in half. I've even done a lot of recipes where I cut, um, cut them in fours, in quarters. So you really, really can do this. Another thing, too, is if you have... We a lot of times I notice with drinks, people <laughs> people take and they'll give their kids a big. First of all, you use really big glasses and let your kids get the biggest glass out of the cabinet and pour their milk in it or pour their juice in it. For my grandkids, I had these little tiny. I was looking to see. I don't have anything to show like it. What it was just a glass, but it was just a little bit bigger than this. When they were like toddlers, they couldn't reach into the, not toddlers, but about four years old or so, they couldn't reach into the higher up cabinet. So I kept these little itsy bitsy cups for them. They would use them to get water or if they wanted, if I was, if they wanted something else, uh, Kool-Aid or something, if I did something special for them, I would, they would bring their cup and I would put that in this little tiny cup. So they, kids, little kids especially don't need even like junior high kids, you need to watch them on how much they pour. So don't get a big glass and then have leftover milk, leftover juice, leftover pop or anything. And you just pour it down the drain because it gets sits on the table or the counter and gets hot. First of all, get the little glasses. Second of all, if they still leave juice in their milk, put it in the refrigerator. That's leftover drinks. You put it in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. They can drink it later on. Think of ways to do these types of things. Is he, any questions on that at all? So okay? one person says, isn't that wasteful for energy though? Energy might be more expensive than ingredients in some places. So you need to bake and cook in bulk. Well, yes and no. In that situation, then you're going to use other appliances. You're going to cook your, you're going to cook your roast in a crock pot for four hours on high instead of in an oven for eight hours on low or something, or you're going to use your instant pot for an hour instead of an oven for, you know, you're just going to have to adapt and adjust to what your situation is. Yes, energy is higher, but... But the thing is, wouldn't you use that energy to make a double recipe? I mean, to make it the regular recipe? Well, yeah, she's saying you should make the regular recipe oh, and, and not and, cut it and, down because it saves but money. But what happens is, and that's fine if you will eat it. Yeah, if you'll eat it. But what we're talking about is everybody thinks they're going to eat all this stuff and they end up throwing it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're going to eat it, put extra in. I do that. A lot of times I'll put extra in, but most people, 
they pull this stuff. I guarantee you there's probably not a person out there that I'm talking to that hasn't had to dump something out of their freezer and probably a lot of somethings over the years out of their freezer that they were going to eat later on and it's got freezer burn mm -hmm. and everything else or it just you leave it sitting in the refrigerator and it spoils. I'm going to have this tomorrow for lunch. Well, you forget about it. You don't have it. So, you know, if you do the double amount to save on the energy, that's fine if you eat it. But if you're not going to eat it, you're wasting that amount of food. And one thing, have a freezer cooking time. Like go and spend one or two weeks and just cook out of your freezer and get your food that you have frozen used Use up, up so that you're not wasting it. Or even the day or two before you're going to the grocery store, Go through your freezer and your refrigerator and use up anything that needs to be used up a couple of days before you go to the grocery store again. It helps empty out your, your refrigerator and the freezer and you get the stuff used up if you keep doing it on a regular basis too. So is that yep. you, okay? Let me see if I have any. I've been pulling questions. Um, oh, let's see. Okay, so go ahead and we'll answer your I'm, questions later that we've got already, okay. guys. The next, the third thing is to buy on sale. I very rarely, I have to get my graham crackers. They never go on sale. So I have to buy them at the regular price. But probably I'd say 90% of my food that I get, I usually wait till it go on, goes on sale. I haven't had cauliflower broccoli. Well, I did because I've eaten over at Tara's house a couple of times and she had it. But for me to buy, I haven't bought cauliflower or broccoli in a year since I moved here. It hasn't been on sale. So I've had to use other things that were cheaper in place of it. And so I just wait till I get every, just buy things on sale. And I go on the outside of the grocery store usually and pick up stuff like that on clearance. I check the clearance racks for bakery things, the meat section. If they have a clearance, I check there. So try to buy everything on sale. <clears throat> okay, this one. I better take a drink. Oh, no, this is going to be. I'm going to get in trouble with this one. <clears throat> All right. One thing that I think helps a lot of people more than you think, and I'm talking to myself too here, but is to eat less food. Why? Because we're fat. <laughs> See, I just say it. She just says Mom it. likes to beat around the bush. I try to be tactful. I'm like, you're fat because you eat too much food. It's being tactful. <laughs> no, but seriously, we really eat more food than what we need. Start doing your serving sizes. I, I think you'd be shocked at how much I've talked about this before. Even for children, you take, what are you laughing at? No, I was just oh. thinking about for kids. People yell at their kids for and not get mad cleaning at their, their place. But the eating. thing is, they'll take a big serving spoon for like a four-year-old and dump one or two spoons without even thinking about it onto their plate, a heaping spoon. Little tiny kids only need like three green beans. Personally, I don't think they need any at all, but <laughs> no, not really. But, you know, you just scoop mm. it on there. And how this goes back with the leftovers. How many of are scraping food? into the, uh, you know, the trash after dinner or the garbage disposal after dinner, the cereal, they fill up, you fill up the bowl and let the kids fill up the bowl with cereal and milk. And they take like four or five bites, maybe a half a dozen, and then it gets all thrown out at the end of the meal. So this kind of is connected with eating your leftovers. You go out to eat. I sit, when I go out to eat, I don't go out that often, but when I do, I'm just appalled at the people order these huge platefuls of food and they do one of two things. They either eat the whole thing or they leave half of it. Oh my goodness. Mike and I went out the other day for our tacos and we share a fajitas and these see. people each had their own dinner and they left three quarters of I know. their food. I know. Three quarters of a $20 meal. People do that. And even a lot of them, take and it will take it home they put it in the refrigerator and forget about it and it gets soggy and gooey and then they don't eat it now how many of you actually have done this before i know i have and so watch for these types of things uh that you know when you're eating too much you just said something there that made me um uh, oh i know i've gone to i go to like over the years i've gone to ladies meetings church potlucks 
And I mean, now, when I fill my plate, there's actually spaces in between when I put stuff on my plate, it's things like this. But I look around the table, I mean, the food, it's mounded. I'm not joking. It's mounded up with the, and it does look good. You're just church, being judgmental. I know. The church potlucks are so yummy. It is hard not to. Now, I do go back for seconds sometimes, but I still don't have anywhere near the mound. You just, I mean, and that's okay. If you're going to eat that much, if you think you need it, and that's fine. Some guys, I know, they can inhale that much food and not have a problem. But what I, the point I'm getting at is, Half of that gets left. I watch them dig through and they get about halfway down the plate and they start getting too full. And I don't know how many things. And what's really a crack up is if I go to ladies meetings, at church or not just church, any place, I'll go to a ladies meeting and they've got their, we got cookies and we got the cake and we got the chips with the dip, you know, and everybody's got their plates full and they're sitting there saying, I cannot figure out why I can't lose weight. I've been trying for two weeks. I'm on this special diet. Now I'm blowing my diet today, but I can't figure out why I'm not losing weight. It's all I can do to keep from just, well, like Tara, laughing. <laughs> saying you're fat because you eat too much. <laughs> Tara. Tara's going to get me in trouble here. Hold on but, just a second, guys. So Dining on a Dime Cookbooks, 25% off right now. Volume 1, Volume 2. All these tips are in our cookbooks. Plus 1,200 more recipes and tips in this one and 800 recipes and tips in this one. And I was so. going to mention, we've got a leftover index in there yeah. that tells you what to do with, like, if you have a half a cup of this. Or raisins. We tell what to do with raisins, with pancakes, with mm -hmm. leftover. If you have one or two muffins left over. What to use it in hot? I didn't know we had it for Hershey syrup, chocolate syrup. What to do with leftover? Who has leftover chocolate syrup in their house? I don't know. I don't think anybody should have that. But we have all kinds of things listed in the leftover mm -hmm. that you, you can do. And our, you should cut the bottle open and lick the chocolate syrup. Michael, yes, you're right. A man after my own heart. <laughs> and our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook, guys. For those of you who are gluten-free, dairy-free, the food actually tastes good. My normal family eats it, and they love it. I opened a can of peaches, a small can of peaches. I got it back there in the back. It has three and a half servings in it. For a while, I was eating a half a can, thinking a half a can was a serving. And a lot of times we don't realize what we're, you know, really eating. So what I'm saying is check these, really look and start checking them out. Um, <clears throat> any more questions on this or should I go on nope. to the next one? Okay. I was just trying to point out so people can visualize. Yeah. What they they're meat wanting to like a there. quarter of a cup. So, um, like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. Two more things. One thing is don't use so many ingredients. Um <clears throat> What I mean by that is no shiitake mushrooms, mother. No shiitake mushrooms. <laughs> no. You guys remember the shiitake mushroom craze? That when we first did the cookbook, mm -hmm. that was the big thing. They were using shiitake mushrooms for everything. And I remember that Martha was shipping in special mushrooms in her recipes from, from yeah, Italy. from yeah. from Europe someplace. And and I thought, okay, we need to do a frugal cookbook here. <laughs> has normal people and food we did. in and we did it yep we did it um but don't use so many ingredients i was watching a gal and i don't want to i don't want to make it seem like she was wrong in any way she was really good she was a frugal lady and she was doing a great job i was very <laughs> impressed with her uh she was sure but she she did a thing uh made a soup that was a perfect example of what i'm going to try to explain and in every way she was she was very careful but she have soup and she showed what she put in it and she put broccoli and she put uh, cauliflower and then she had spinach she put in it she had zucchini she had carrots she had onion and I think she had one other thing these seven different things so she had bought she had to buy a you know all these seven and broccoli cauliflower and spinach are kind of expensive vegetables to me mm -hmm. And she did make a nice vegetable soup that lasted her for a little bit. But if you just, you could do a soup with like, if you had leftover green beans and carrots and maybe a little corn and 
even at the most peas, that's only four ingredients. And you could still make a really nice vegetable soup without having to do seven huge ingredients and still get a lot of nutrients. And the other things, it saves you time. You don't have to be cleaning all these seven different vegetables. So we make our life a little bit more complicated by using these recipes with lots of ingredients in them. And you need to cut them down. The book, our book, and a lot of stuff we put online, Tara's, what is it, super easy recipes stuff, it's, have pretty just a handful, as few as you can, uh, ingredients. You'll save money if you're not buying a whole bunch of difference because a lot of times, like with one person like me, and she was a single lady, there was no way I could eat all seven of those vegetables within the lot of time before they would probably start spoiling, you know, for me. So cut things down and keep the, the recipe simple and don't use as many, don't use as many spices. I mean, I can't believe they have these special long cabinet things they pull out with spices all up and down. I mean, they have cabinets full of spices, <clears throat> drawers full of spices, and it's expensive to buy all those spices. And yeah, I know they taste good and everything, but I've discovered something. Uh, it was like 25, 30 years ago, they started taking sugar and salt and fat out of all the a lot of the foods and things. And at the same time that that happened, I noticed people started using all these specialty things like special sauces to pour on their chicken. Special, I mean, how many? You have what? Honey baked chicken and you have what other kinds of sauces you put on? Ch cream of chicken or something like sweet that. And sour, barbecue, sweet and sour, barbecue chocolate. chicken, all these different sauces. And they started putting sauces on. They started putting all these rubs on all their meats. Um, and I thought, what is going on? And it dawned on me that the the they took so much stuff out of some of the foods they were having to spice it up with this to make the food taste better. My mom, she's gotten complimented all the time on what she cooks. People compliment me and I can't figure out why, because I don't use any of those special spices. I have, I've got onion powder, garlic powder, chili powder, oregano, and salt. I think I, yeah, I think that's, a, oh, I know, I got liquid smoke. That's all I've got for spices, for savory. And the same goes with my baking spices. I've got cinnamon, uh, ginger, uh, nutmeg, cloves, and I use a little bit of allspice once in a while. That's what I've got for my spices, all my spices that I use all the time. And I thought, why would my chicken taste good? But, you know, as good or even better than some people that put all the rubs and everything on. I cook my chicken with the skin on. I'm not afraid of the fat. See, people started, stopped using the fat and putting this cooking with the skin. And I think what's happened is I just put a little salt, cook the skin on the chicken, and all the fat and the juices cook down into the chicken. And when people eat it, they get, they're getting the real chicken flavor, and it tastes good to them. You know, they like that good chicken flavor. So there's nothing wrong with using different spices. I'm not saying don't do that. But if inflation's hitting and you're having a crunch on your groceries, this is one way to start saving. You can steal good, good flavored stuff without having to spend a whole lot of money. It's all in the way you cook it. Slow cooking your meat makes enhances the flavor. Um, oh, I Sarah, repost your questions. We're having issues with Facebook, guys. So if you put a question and we didn't see it, put it in again. We're trying to catch it again. But Facebook is being a PETA today. Yeah, I, I'm having to unhide them in Facebook for some reason. So I don't know why it's hiding almost every comment in Facebook. So just if you have a question, please repost it. I'm trying to get them unhid as fast as as fast as they're coming up. But um I'm having a hard time. So, and um, Celeste, we will put the two ingredient uh, pumpkin recipe in there for you. Another thing, um, kind of along this line, it's not quite the same thing, but learn how to stretch your, your food a little bit in like your meat. Uh, if I take a can of tuna, I can open that can of tuna up and mix it with mayo and pickles and maybe get three to four sandwiches, depending on how I sp thin I spread it. Uh, usually about three sandwiches, but you can take that same can of tuna 
make a white sauce. We've got the white sauce recipe in the book, I think, and make a white sauce with it. Hold on. Wait. Diana and I'm Yeah, we've one. got a white sauce in there. 25% off now. <laughs> and you can dump that can of tuna in the white sauce and you can feed a family for put the, make some toast, put the white sauce on the toast and it, you can stretch your meat. You can do this with hamburger and hamburger gravy with uh, sausage and sausage gravy. Just put it on toast or a piece of bread, something like that and learn to stretch your meat and a lot of your other ingredients like that. Also cut your food up really small I, when I make stew, I notice a lot of people do pretty good chunk size. I take my, have my butcher cut it up into about a half an inch little squares. They're tiny, but people just take a bite of meat. And whether it's a big bite or a little bite, they're going to take a bite of meat. So by having a lot more little pieces, you can stretch that quite a bit. I dice up the carrots or the well, I do, I do do carrots in there, the carrots, but my potatoes, I dice them up smaller in there. And so you get just a smaller, so you'll take a bite of it, but, and I think people enjoy eating things too more. It's easier for them to eat, especially for children than to, and older people than having to try to jam a big chunk of meat or that, but it stretches the food out. Did that make sense? What I just said? Mm -hmm. Nope. Any questions? Should I go on to the next? Yeah. And then one last thing I was going to address if you, um, if you, are cooking for like one or two or even a family. I I used to cook those 30-day freezer meals, not for myself, but I had a lady that she hired me and I would cook her 30 meals for a whole month for her to take home and put into her freezer. It was a lot of work, a lot of work. And so you might do a compromise type thing and Close your ears, Kimmy, if you're watching. <laughs> yeah, I know some of you like doing that and go for it. But, it, you know, it was too much for me, especially with me being sick. But I found a compromise in that is I will cook up my meat and um, have it already cooked, like my hamburger. I don't always cook my chicken, but I divide my chicken up into little pouches, you know, and that's a whole different thing that I'll go into another time how I do my chicken. But the hamburger I will take and I'll fry up. I'll take and fry up little hamburger patties and then I can pull out and put in hamburger bun or have it with some cold slaw or something like that. I, before I don't cook it, but I make meatballs and then I put in packets of meatballs for our barbecue meatballs. I love barbecue meatballs. So I make several packets of that. We, my mom has a barbecue meatball recipe in there. It's a barbecue sauce. The meatballs are good, but that barbecue sauce is to die for. But I have those all made up in the freezer, so I just have to pull the meatballs out, lay them in my, my little cake pan, and then I put the barbecue sauce on, and, and they're, you know, it's pretty easy. Then I take and make some, um, do the crumbled hamburger, and I fry it up, and I'm going to use that for tacos, for spaghetti, for lasagna, all that type of thing. I just pull out a little packet and I put it in my sauces, whatever I need it for, for that. And then the last thing I do is I fry up little bitty patties, make up gravy then with the drippings. And I'll put those little patties in containers with some gravy on it. And then I'll just pull out the containers and I'll do up four or five of those for me to have a quick, fast meal that I just have to thaw out. So I have the hamburger, the meats all cooked. So it makes cooking the meal then when I get ready to do it. If I want tacos, I just drive out my packet of hamburger and put it in there. It's not like I have to get a pan out and fry up the hamburger. I use one small pan and I do it all at one time. And so that does save a little time doing that. Sorry, Jimmy. I didn't find this one. Do you have any recipes? It's in there. I shared it. It's in there. Go ahead. Sorry. So, We're having issues, guys. We're trying to get it figured out. But um, so it's a good thing I'm doing all the talking tonight. <laughs> all I hear is blah, blah, blah. You so. hear blah, blah, blah. See, moms, isn't that the truth? The kids just kind of, well, let me show them real quick and then I'll go on to what I eat. Somebody asked, how do you save on trash? And and I just had to believe, bring these because this was my original notes that I was making. And this is how I save on trash. I don't know if you know what I did, but I took it last year, my calendar. It had blank 
on one side. And so when I took it down, instead of just throwing it in the trash, I cut it up into little squares and I use them for my notepads for my grocery list and stuff like that. I do all kinds of, I use up all this stuff and I have hardly any trash at all because I do stuff with my cardboards and my, you know, that type of thing. I just, I have, if I have plastic containers or something now, I'm not a hoarder because I have one shelf on the garage and when it's <laughs> full, then I start throwing things away. I'm not, I'm actually coughing. I'm not <laughs> making a comment. <laughs> oh, I'm just for you. But, you know, so I, once I had that shelf full, I don't use anymore, but I never get the shelf full, oddly enough, because I reuse the stuff constantly and these things. So, Mike, share the barbecue beef uh, meatballs recipe. Mike? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, do you want me to do what I'm eating uh, now, or should you and do questions so, since uh, we're done? So let's see. Somebody said, do you vacuum pack all your, so mom does vacuum seal all her meat. I do. I, don't, I but do. But I use it faster than yeah. she does. So. See, if I do five pounds of hamburger, that'll last me almost a year worth of hamburger. Yeah. Almost a year. Yeah. Uh, so before we go on to that, what do you use for cardboard to reuse it? She wants to know. Uh, Diana wants oh. to know. Oh, well, I use it for dividers, like in my sock drawer and in my sewing room. Instead of going buying the fancy containers or getting containers even at the Dollar Tree, I'll use it for containers for different things. Um, what? And I use it a lot, like if I'm going to paint something, like I was getting ready to paint a picture frame and I needed to lay the picture frame on something. So I'll put it and paint it on top of the cardboard so I won't mess up the grass or the uh table i don't know i just if i need a pattern for sewing uh i never buy uh quilting patterns or anything i make my own templates and cut them out you know i use a rotary cutter in a mat yes but sometimes i'll need a template for something special i cut things out i just constantly need uh what was it? i was dividing some papers the other day and i took a thin some of my thinner cardboard and i made like little file folders that, for that uh, out of that. And I just, I don't know. I just find stuff to use it for, uh, all the time. Mom's not a hoarder guys. Good oh morning. no, you die. I don't, I believe me. My father and his entire family <laughs> was hoarders. I know what hoarders are. Mom is not a hoarder. No, I have three <laughs> things of shelving in my garage. They're not even full. It'll I take don't... us a half a day to clear out our house when she yeah. goes to be with Jesus. Yeah. So, don't I don't have, I don't even hoard. I don't even hoard my <laughs> fabric. I have about one or the home eighth <laughs> one eighth of the fabric that you know even just regular quilters have so no but I use the stuff that's why it's not hoarding because I don't just let it sit there on the shelf I'm constantly yeah. pulling a jar out that I need it for something or to yeah. start a flower you know if I'm starting a flower I get the jar out and fill it with water and use it so we will have to take a picture I'll show you my garage one time of how much stuff I have in there. And I think you'll be surprised that. Um, okay. Yeah, guys, we're having problems with Facebook. I don't know what the issue is, but anyway. Um, do you want me to yeah, do this? I don't thing? know. Okay. So mom is going to share what she eats in a day and then what she eats in a month or a week. Oh, I was just going to do a week. However, yeah. we or mom's oh, okay. going to share what she eats in a week. Yeah. And um, give you the whole list of what it is. Go for it. Should I give them the list first and then just let them see the groceries? Or how do you want? I would just stand up and show them. Oh, you want me to stand up? Yeah. Or can you stand? Uh, I can, but it would be kind of hard to show them while I'm doing it. Doing it. Let me just read this out and then I'll just show you the groceries okay, back well, there. Mom's going to show you. Mom's going to tell you what you eat, <laughs> what she eats in a week. <laughs> I eat for breakfast every single morning graham crackers. It may sound boring, and that's why I'm saying you guys need to adapt these things to your lifestyle. It wouldn't work for everybody, but I have chronic fatigue syndrome. I cannot figure out in the morning when I get up what to eat different every day. So I came up with the idea. I love the graham crackers with my coffee, and I thought, why not just do that every morning? It's perfect. I don't have to think when I crawl out of bed. I just do it automatic. I can do a lot of stuff on automatic that way. I take and I use eat four of the long squares, the long rectangles. I just spread them in butter and then a little 
thin, thin butter. I don't use a lot of butter. I don't use a lot of ketchup. I don't use a lot. If I put stuff like mayonnaise and stuff on things, I use a small amount. Once you get the first initial spread of it on there, you've got the taste. So why are you putting a half an inch of mayonnaise on a sandwich when you've got the taste with the first little bit of spread? So start using that stuff and teach your kids to not use, just squirt, you know, a whole bunch of stuff on everything. So I just put a, th a little bit of butter and dunk it in my coffee. And so that's, well, I won't read you all the prices, but that's, it's gone up with inflation and it's all the way up to $1.85. So I have, I just did a six day menu because sometimes I'll go over to Taurus and I'll like after the show tonight or something, I'll maybe eat there. So I just did six days, but, um, uh, but the graham crackers are for a whole week. The inflation price is $1.85. It's gone up about 25 cents since I moved here and started doing them. So I got them even cheaper when I was in Aldi's, the, uh, when I lived in Wichita, because the Aldi's was even cheaper. So I had a big price jump when I moved here. Now inflation, it's, the price has gone up, but I'm still doing fine. You know, I keep adapting and adjusting things. So that's what I have for breakfast. Every morning is graham crackers and it's $1.85 for a week. Now the lunch and dinners, I put them together because Whatever I'm feeling like, if I'm feeling good at lunchtime, I'll fix my dinner, you know, or my supper at lunch at lunchtime instead of in the evening because I'm feeling good. So I just mix them around whenever I have. So I just gave I gave you I'm giving you a list of 12 different things that I would eat either for lunch or for dinner for that day. I would have like peanut butter on toast, just spread some peanut butter on a piece of toast and have a piece of fruit like a banana, an apple, something like that. Or maybe I'd have a little piece of cucumber or a couple of slices of tomato. Not my $350 tomato. <laughs> you know, I just have one of those things. That's all I'd have. I took my, my fruits and my vegetables a couple of weeks ago. I added up how much I spent on all of them. And some were less, some were higher. And I went and divided, took the average, divided them up and took an average. And they came out to be about 30 cents a serving for my fruits and vegetables. So banana, I've got down for 30 cents, but usually it's just about 15 cents, but I just use the average. Okay, peanut butter toast with banana. Then I'll have toast with a couple of fried eggs or my little poacher thing with poached eggs. Then for another meal, I'll have like an apple with peanut butter spread on it. I'll fix, open a can of tuna and add a hard boiled egg and I'll have three meals out of that one can of tuna with a hard boiled egg. And then I'll also eat again, a slice of cucumber, piece of fruit. That's what I'll have. Cottage cheese, I'll have cottage cheese with peaches, usually canned peaches. Yeah, usually a canned peaches or pears, something like that. And out of a small container, I've got a large container tonight, but out of a small container, I can get three meals out of that. So there's six meals just with the tuna and the cottage cheese. Um, then I'll make like spaghetti for uh, a dinner or lunch. And I don't like the can, the jar spaghetti sauce necessarily. Now for you Italians that love your spaghetti sauce with all the, you know, stuff that you make from scratch, you go, you know, that's, that's, you go for it because if that's your nationality that's what you enjoy and that type of thing, that's fine. But I just take a can of tomato soup. And why I have tomato soup, too, besides just a jar of spaghetti, is in my prepping closet. My tomato soup, I can use it for a lot of different things. Like I can use it for the spaghetti. I use it for chili. I can use it just for tomato soup with like a grilled cheese sandwich. So see, if I had just the spaghetti sauce in there, it wouldn't go be as adaptable, you know, to eat a soup and stuff like that. So that's why I use the canned tomato soup because... The prepping things, I like to have my stuff that I can use in more than one way to fix for a meal. So, but I take the soup and all that I do is add the water. I add onion powder, garlic powder, uh, oregano and salt in there and just simmer it. Then I boil up my noodles and my noodles are only about, for the noodles that I'll make for that one meal would be about 10 cents because I get my noodles for 49 cents. I just a week ago got them for 49 cents on sale, my spaghetti noodles. The hamburger, I only use my little quarter cup thing of hamburger 
in there. And that's all I'll use for that spaghetti sauce. Sometimes I'll put two if I'm going, if I'm just in the mood for more meat and I'll go or think I need more meat that day for some reason. Uh, don't, I know somebody will probably be saying, well, that's not, you're not eating any vegetables very much in here, but I don't know if people realize spaghetti sauce, one quarter cup, this much a spaghetti sauce is equal to one serving of vegetable. And so I get, I do at least two of these, sometimes even three of those with my tomato soup. So I'm getting my vegetables there. And um, I use half the spaghetti sauce that I made for my spaghetti that, that day. Then I take the leftover spaghetti. This is where you use your leftovers. I put chili powder in the leftover spaghetti, stick it in the fridge for the next day. And the next day I'll have um, chili and I'll eat a handful of crackers. The crackers will be like five cents. The chili is about 65 cents and 25 cents for the hamburger that I put in it. Cause if I put extra hamburger in it or something, so that's not a whole lot for a, a meal. And then I'll also have um, a potato. Sometimes I'll just make me a baked potato and all that I put, I don't put hamburger and vegetables and cheese and stack it up high. Those are delicious. I love them. And if you got the money to do that, go for it. But by not using, once again, not so many ingredients, I will just put plain old butter on it with some cheese, a nice ha handful of cheese. And that's a full meal for me. Now, that may sound like I'm not eating a whole lot, but that's not all I eat throughout the day. Usually in the afternoon, then I have a list of like snacks and I will after lunch, then I keep a can of peanuts all the time open or cashews. The kids will get me cashews for Christmas because I like them or I just buy peanuts on sale and I'll go in about two o'clock and grab me a handful of peanuts and that satisfies me. I've got another hand, uh, that whole handful of peanuts is a thing of protein. So I add that in. Um, then about, oh, I don't know, four o'clock, I will eat a piece of fruit or cut me a little chunk of cucumber or something. And I eat that at four o'clock because at 4.30, I usually eat my meal. And what that does is, I'm not hungry after eating that piece of fruit or that piece of cucumber and it's time for supper. So I go ahead and fix supper and I don't inhale. I'm not starving to death and I don't start snarfing a whole bunch because I'm halfway satisfied. And I think, I don't think people use this method very much to try to lose weight or keep their weight down because it, I'm so satisfied that I'll eat my small amount of meal my, that I'm supposed to eat, but I have no desire to eat a whole lot. So that helps me in that way. So I just keep the, I do two stacks basically in the afternoon and then, uh, okay, I'm con confessing. Then I also take, and um, I have every afternoon, I have a mini uh, candy bar. You guys know I have to have a mini candy bar, you, like a Snickers or a Hershey's or something like that. I have a little mini. If I have a big giant candy bar, I will just take a little strip of it is all I take. And then I'll have a second little mini candy bar in the evening. That's my only snack in the evening because they they really satisfy me pretty good. That's why I eat my chocolate because it satisfies me. Is that a good excuse? No. <laughs> and and the thing is, and that's really, I know I sound like I eat mounds of chocolate all the time, but really that's pretty. Oh, but will you eat chocolate covered crickets? No. See, I, I told don't, you guys. I don't want to even touch a cricket. They insisted they, that you would eat chocolate covered cr crickets. No. I'm like, my mother would not eat chocolate covered now, crickets. Now, if I was desperate, I might scrape the chocolate off the cricket. I might do that. <laughs> I don't like touching. I don't like chocolate touching. that much. <laughs> but... What I do like, I only do this every three or four months, usually after Halloween, at Christmas, but I, I kind of got a hit of schedule this year. And when I had the chocolate, I had the chalk, big chocolate candy bar out. And I did really good with the big one I had before, just eating my little piece. And then I got this second big chocolate candy bar out. And it was my last, my last one. And I was looking at it and I thought, 
okay, I need to just eat my little piece. But I don't know what came over me. I thought, I have got to have more. And I mean, I stood there looking at it. I walked into the living room, sat down. I thought, no. I got up, walked back into the kitchen, looked at it. I just chunked that thing off there and I gobbled it all down. And I felt so good afterwards. So what I do is every once in a while, I allow myself to eat what I want in my candy. And what happens is because I'm not do that, I don't crave it quite as much. Now, I'll not ever do that again for till after Halloween, probably now, you know, so it's not like I do that every single day and all the time. Now, so I added a little bit of extra money in for the snacks and put that in there. And all oh, and, and I added five cents a day for um, I drink a cup of coffee every day in the morning for breakfast. And it only costs I figured up I have a coffee, a container of coffee that has 240 servings. I use half the amount of coffee you're supposed to use per serving. So I can get 480 cups out of that container. So I can, that's almost a year supply for me for coffee uh, using that. And so I put down, you know, five cents a day for, for coffee, which I don't usually always drink two cups of coffee a day or eat never very rarely three cups of coffee. But I added that all in the total came, I surprised myself, it came to $6 and 85 cents. Now, I say that was for the week. And I say I, I spend $20, but I have $13 now left over that I will use for oh, things like ketchup and mustard. But a thing of ketchup would last me at least a year. A thing of mustard lasts me a year. I don't go through that stuff very much at all. As a matter of fact, I had to throw some mayonnaise away because I'd had it in there for like a year. And I'm thinking, I'm not sure if it's still good or not. So I thought I'd better. But uh, I don't buy, use that. I stretch that stuff out pretty good. Um, so that $13, like for two weeks, I've been craving some ice cream. And I only buy the cheapy Walmart chocolate chip ice cream. It is so good. If you guys have not tried, I've tried the expensive kinds of ice cream because everybody says they're so good. And I've had samples at other people's house. I'm sorry, that Walmart ice in the cheap Walmart ice cream is so creamy and has so much more flavor. It is really yummy. And I was going to get me the $13 go for me to buy. And I think it's like, I don't think it's too much more than $2 for a half gallon. And I was going to buy me, use the $13 and buy me a thing of ice cream, which would last me for at least two weeks. And then I'd go another week or two without anything. But I haven't been able to get any. They had been out of it. So here's, I'm going on week three, trying to get my ice cream. But that's what the $13 goes for. Once in a while, if potato chips, the potato chips were on sale for Labor Day for $1.67. So I bought me a bag of potato chips. That's a treat. I probably won't buy potato chips now again until Christmas. So that's what I, so I say $20 because that's what it comes up to. Um, just to show you, this is basically all the stuff. Now I didn't eat all of this. See, I still got, I paid 99 cents for the cheese <clears throat> last week. And you know, I didn't use hardly any of that, any of this cheese. I got this on sale. I forget what that was. It was pretty cheap though. It was just under $2. Um, here's my hamburger that I vacuum seal. A lot of times I'll take my little packets and vacuum seal them and put them in a, or not vacuum seal them, but put them in a little plastic, a little bit of plastic or a cheapy baggie. And I'll put them in a bigger vacuum seal containers. That way I don't have to use up all my good vacuum seal bags for it. Cottage cheese, like I said, I usually I figured that because I usually use the half of container of cottage cheese for one week. Here's the can of peaches I was saying that I was eating a half a can of thinking it was one serving and it's three and a half servings. This here size can. Right there you go. There you go. And then here's my tomato soup that I <clears throat> use for my spaghetti sauce. And I just add a can of water with it. And that's my chili and my spaghetti sauce for two meals. 
And then the tuna, like I was saying, my apple. I don't have a cucumber or banana here. I didn't have that. Of course, here's my box of grams. And here's my packet of spaghetti noodles right here. I'm afraid to tilt them. I have eggs underneath there. This is my can of peanuts. I keep it in the can cabinet. I go in, I reach a handful out, put the lid, and that's what I eat. I've had this can for, oh, at least a week and a half that I've been eating out of it. It's still up to here. So that's my food that I eat. I don't know that it was that impressive, but... But it gives you an idea of how you can start looking at your food differently. You may not want to eat that same stuff, but you can maybe think, well, I don't have money to buy a whole bunch of meat, but if I find peanuts on sale for a little bit inexpensive, I can eat a handful of peanuts during the day for a snack and for my protein or, uh, you know, buy small bananas and get the smallest ones because everybody eats one banana and so why not get the smallest ones because it'd be cheaper per pound. Mm -hmm. And all these tips are in our Dining on a Dime cookbooks, guys. 25% off right now. Yeah, and check out our, on a dime .com. our YouTube channel, too, and <clears throat> type in different subjects because we cover all these subjects at different times in the videos, too, you know. So we have no questions at all. Yeah. Oh. I You're just you were... going on and on, so I'm letting you go on and on. <laughs> um. Yeah, so that's pretty much what mom eats in a week. Uh -huh. um, now, for all of you who are going to leave nasty comments, uh, you didn't do the bread, eggs, or milk, she said. Donna said, where's your bread and eggs and milk? Her uh, bread's up there, and her eggs are up there. I, the, my eggs, I said there. the eggs were underneath the spaghetti. Oh, did I have milk for something? I don't know, but she does get milk. I do get milk, but I don't think I used milk on anything in here tonight. I just okay. showed what I got for... This week. No, I haven't even used any milk this week at all. So and that's why. For everybody who's hollering, she was just at the doctor's two weeks ago and her blood work is 100%. Yeah, fine, I was going to mention so... that because I knew everybody would be hollering. And I have been, for 20 years, I've gone in for a physical every year with three different doctors over that, that 20 year period. And every single time, my vitamin level is just off the charts. I mean, good. There's nothing wrong perfectly good and I went to the, my new doctor here just a few weeks back and the look on her face it was kind of funny because I could tell she was pre she felt funny because she, it was like okay I'm supposed to tell her she needs to do something here but there's nothing to tell her to do because she said everything was really really good she said not only was all my vitamin levels and all that stuff super good she, she I don't know what kind of test she did on me for this but uh, it was one of the tests she did. She said, you don't have whatever it is you have in your blood that um, it, it shows that I'm not, I don't have allergies. I don't have to fight off any allergies because I don't have any allergies. She said, I don't even know what to say because she, my weight was fine. And they always, I found out with doctors, they sometimes automatically say, you need to exercise. You need to drink more water. You need to do this. That's what they, but she couldn't even say any of those things because I, everything was perfectly fine. And I've done that for 20 years. I'm not overweight. I wish I could leave it, lose about five or 10 pounds, but I'm not overweight for my age and everything. <clears throat> so does that answer their question yep. about my health? Mm -hmm. So you guys want to know about my $350 tomato right here. <laughs> this is my first tomato of the year. It is September 14th. I have spent $350 and eight months to get this tomato. <laughs> and you think gardening is going to save your life when the fecal <laughs> matter hits the oscillation unit? I got another thing coming to you. And she actually knows what she's doing. And I have she's, been gardening for 35 she, years. She hasn't always said, but she's a mat was a master gardener in three two states. Three, three states. states. Three states. Yeah, that's right. Three <laughs> states. And she's the one that you call at the county extension or whatever to find out how to do this stuff. So she knows what she's doing. So I finally, for all of you wondering, I know I've been saying for months, I don't even know if I'm going to get a tomato. I got a 
tomato. <laughs> and no, you cannot have it. It's my tomato. I spent $350 on this thing. It's a good looking tomato. I have to give you credit. It's a good looking. $350 on this thing. <laughs> um, okay. So now questions. Um, Beautiful tomato. Brenda asked, why does Tara think her tomato is so precious? Because it's worth $350. <laughs> and a lot of work. <laughs> and eight months worth of work. Uh, that is why. Um, <laughs> yeah, that is an expensive BLT. I know. Uh, T. Crosby says, what is a good gluten-free breakfast that isn't eggs? You could have to we eat, uh, or I eat, gluten-free toast with jam and bacon. Um, you could have gluten-free oatmeal, you could have cream of rice, you could have French toast, you could have pancakes. You do not have to eat breakfast. Eat leftovers from lunch. Make a smoothie or with make a smoothie with fruit or yeah, something. Any smoothies, any things like that, you can make any of those things. Mm -hmm. So um okay, Sarah, we finally got your comment. <laughs> I do not know what's happening with Facebook. I'm really sorry, guys, but something wacky is going on. So Sarah said, I heard news something this morning about trains delivering food and stuff having issues. I missed it. Getting ready for work. Is this true? And then later she said, um, I missed what the cause is. Do you know anything? As far as I know, Sarah, they're talking about a train strike. They have been talking about a train strike for like four or five months now. I'll believe it when I see it. It may happen, but that's why I have my stockpile. So if food can't get through, I've got food on hand. So, um, you know, that's why we keep telling you guys to stockpile for stuff like this. And even so. like with my graham crackers, I put $1.85 down for the price because that's what they are now. But that's not what I paid for this box because I've got enough graham crackers through February of next year. So I won't be paying a dollar eighty-five for at least you know that many months because yeah. uh, I stockpiled and got them up, got them cheaper. Amazing Grace Slant Ranch. Yes, I do like cream of rice. I eat it all the time. Mm, actually, it's good. I had some. And that's another thing. Eat rice cereal. Have rice with if you can do dairy milk. If not, do rice milk or soy milk or almond milk and put a little um, butter and um, cinnamon, and, cinnamon sugar and sugar and warm it up and you can eat that. That's uh, another way of using leftover. If you have mm -hmm. rice the night before, use that rice for cereal the next morning. Yeah. Uh, Tana, what area of the store do you find liquid smoke in the... Uh, With the barbecue sauce. Condiments area. Yeah, yep. where the barbecue sauce and that type of what thing. What dry milk do you recommend? I throw out sour milk all the time. So I just get the cheapy Walmart kind of dry milk, but don't throw out sour milk. Freeze it in ice cube trays and you can use it for baking muffins and pancakes. Yeah, and, you, um, all use your stuff. sour milk in that. And on the liquid smoke, I meant to me mention I do keep liquid smoke. And the thing is, I forgot when I make my chili, I add I found, started adding a few drops of liquid smoke to my chili. Oh my goodness, that makes it good. So, yeah. Uh, does powdered creamer ever expire? I only buy it, I only, I don't use it. I buy it once or twice a year. I would take a really long time to expire. Uh, I had some I for like know. four years, I think, and it was still yeah. fine. It'll clump uh, maybe, but I, I'm sure it'll just, it'll just dissolve yeah. in the coffee. Uh, I think it's Denise says, How long did it take us to write? The first cookbook, two years I worked on it. Two years it took me to write it. She was and on And writing it and... is 5%, five five percent. no, writing it is 2% of the work. If you think two years writing it is a lot of work, that testing the recipes nothing. and marketing so, is just like... Well, dining one, we didn't really have to test too many recipes because they were already family recipes. Well, but I then... tested a lot. I don't think you remember you were on bed rest. <laughs> I well, had to make, I, know, I had to take mashed potatoes, like mashed potatoes. I just make them. She said, well, I need the exact ingredients. So I'd go over and make mashed potatoes about twice trying to figure out how much I put stuff in there. So that's where we, I had trouble with number one. I had to test the family recipes to find out how much we used. And, uh, dining one is all of our family recipes. Dining two is all the recipes that we couldn't fit in volume one. And then gluten-free dairy-free is an adaptation of volume one. Um, okay. How long does a box of chocolates last you? They want to know. A box of chocolates? Uh, well, 
like the bag of Snickers or Hershey's little mini candy bars. I didn't know if you mean a box like this or probably like Russell Stover's. Russell I no Stover's. They make it sound like it's, it's Russell, Stover's. Russell Stover's. Oh, I don't know. Those now those fall into the category of my of a little bit more special. The box you don't really eat Russell Stover's very much. You don't like it because you don't like. Well, all I those. like some of the. Yeah, I, but you don't like like the cream filled. So all she eats is like the turtles and maybe yeah, I eat the, the caramel ones out of Russell Stover's. And the caramels. Yeah, that's about it. So I she doesn't those. eat the creams or anything. And like the that. coconut ones in Russell Stover's. Yeah. I like those. So I do, but uh, those I might go through a little bit faster just because they're a little bit more on the special treat type thing than my regular candy um heather i like having oatmeal using still cut oats and half the amount of recommended serving size put craisins in it slight tables and a slight tablespoon of peanut butter in the mix it does me the first half of the day there you go yeah oatmeal doesn't do i can eat oatmeal and i'm hungry in 30 minutes it drives me nuts well, but find what works for you the graham works, crackers i have no snacks in the morning at all and sometimes no. i almost forget lunch and i'll look up and it's one o'clock because the graham crackers satisfy me some people it's eggs and toast you know so yeah. pick out that find the food that helps you because that's really good good idea to do uh, mom just eats, you just eat the cheapy Walmart graham crackers. Don't yeah, you? just yeah. the cheapy ones. Uh, just the Walmart brand. And, and I get, I get the cinnamon sugar ones. I don't get regular graham crackers. It makes it, I like them much better for breakfast. Um, do you cook your meat before dividing it into little packets? I do. I don't know yeah, if mom does, but I do. I do. The only yeah. thing I don't cook is the meatballs, but everything else yeah. I cook. Uh -huh. And I just freeze the meatballs in the pan and then take, Line it with foil, put the meatballs in, freeze it, take the foil out, put it in a freezer bag, and then I just stack them up and use them when I need them. So, um, and okay, wait a minute. We didn't go back to the train thing, did we? So I think there, yeah, I think there's going to be supposed to be a strike and I don't know what they're striking for. I have no idea. Everybody's striking for everything. Um, See, one more step and train that the country is on the YouTube. They want more money and the company doesn't want to pay them more? Or more something. Well, how much do they get paid? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I'll let them know if it's a good wage or not. <laughs> Tar will take care of it. The, the train strike. <laughs> oh, have mercy. Um, let's see. I got behind on the comments here because I was talking. Question, what do you think about fasting? Go for it if you want. There's nothing um, wrong with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. It's, uh-huh. I mean, you can save money and just eat one or two meals a day if you want. Um, but, yeah. Actually, you can eat, people can really eat a lot less. You know, we have the, we have in their mind seven fruits and vegetables. Well, what happens is a lot of people think that means they have to eat seven vegetables and seven fruits a day. But no, that's combined. And even then, that's kind of like for a man to eat that many. You know, a woman, an elderly woman, you know, an older woman. Hey, you were making fun of my potato that was this big the other day. Oh, so. you should have seen her potato. <laughs> She's so proud of that tomato. Her potatoes were the size of a quarter. Her Ugh. turnips were a quarter of an inch bigger. I'm, I'm sorry. You, when I, had I looked at those things, year, I thought, I've never seen anything quite that small before. In Jennifer wants to know, is liquid smoke not good for you? Yeah, it's fine. It's just oh, seasoning. Oh, yeah, it's just seasoning. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't like worry about chili powder. It. You're not something. drinking it. You're using a <laughs> tablespoon in five pounds of meat. I mean, you know, I wouldn't, I would not work. You know, I guess I'm, I'm 71 years this. old. I have been inhaling this stuff for 71 years. And I'm in perfect health. And I see a lot of other people that are just insanely going to health food stores and buying all this and buying all this special. And they're sick all the time. And I can't understand it. And so it may be just, I don't know, maybe I'm just healthier or something, but it's, it's not harming me. I may die of a heart attack tomorrow or get cancer next week, but I'm 71. I should be start doing something like that, you know, so... I'm sorry, I don't, it's 7 to 1. You I'm know what it is. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what it is. The thing is, you stress, people stress so much over their food. I do not stress over my food. If I only want an apple for supper, I'm just going to eat an apple. I, I don't worry about it. I don't, I don't stress eat. I don't read all the ingredients on the package to make sure it doesn't have something. 
that is stressful. And I've had doctor after doctor tell me the main thing that causes people to get sick is stress. And if you don't think you're stressing over your food, I've said this a million times. You guys have heard me. So many people now spend more time reading their ingredients and what's in their food than they spend reading their Bible. And if that's not kind of like worshiping your food and getting stressed over it, you've got to be careful. Don't don't let the money that you need to buy your food, the ingredients in your food. Am I going to have to give up this food? Don't let that stress you out. I haven't even known, we've gone through inflation how many times in the past few years, didn't even know it was happening until just recently, people have been popping up mentioning dates, years, and I'm thinking, I didn't know we were having an inflation problem then. Even now, the inflation so far has an effect. I mean, now, I'm not saying that maybe in three months, it might make a big difference, but I still have enough room. All this stuff, I could adapt even more to get down less if I had to, you know, or eat even less. So I'm not letting it stress me out is what I'm trying to say. And once again, thank you everyone for admiring. <laughs> oh, it's got my a spot right here. <laughs> Don't touch the $350. You didn't, pol you didn't polish it before you brought it in. You should have polished it. $350 tomato right there, guys. There it is right there. Somebody asked what variety of $350 tomato is that? It looks really good. I, I have know. to give her credit. It so, looks like a good flavored tomato. I can't tell you because all my markers blew away in the wind. <laughs> well, so <laughs> next year, my markers are going to be painted on rocks. <laughs> That's why people use rocks. This is, if you guys should have, could have seen my first garden, my first big vegetable garden I ever had. You, I mean, I was literally trading restaurant meals for my garden produce because I had so much and I was trading restaurant meals and I was eating steaks <laughs> because I had so much garden produce that I traded it with the restaurant and for like six months I ate steaks every day. Oh, she had just uh, chives alone in Idaho that I was running down to the restaurant. It was like every day, big bunches of chives because she had so, yeah. just so many. Uh, oh, <clears throat> Tea and coffee roses says Tara, you may <coughs> need to build <coughs> a greenhouse. <coughs> <laughs> she's she's coughing at Actually, Michael. Actually, I saw one made out of pallets on Pinterest. Mm. And we're cookbook publishers, and we have pallets right there. Tons we have forty five pallets just pallets. right in front of us. <laughs> and so I was thinking, hmm, pallets, greenhouse. I see a common denominator here. <laughs> Um, but actually it was a really good idea. They just made the walls of the greenhouse out of pallets. And I was like, well, that's pretty smart. You don't have to buy wood. They just stacked them all up. I can mm -hmm. do that myself. I think Jack and I will do that this October. <laughs> How does that make you feel? Uh, John says, save the seeds. Yes, I do yeah. save my seeds. And um, I do. Everyone's admiring your hair and how oh, beautiful oh, and shiny. <laughs> when Tar cut it from Tar cutting it off. And they want to know about how your haircut turned out. <sighs> That's it. That is it. I didn't get a curl. Well, it was pouring down rain. We had to run from the house over to here and it was pouring yeah. down rain. So it's kind of drooping a little yes. bit now. But she did good on it. I wasn't worried about it. <laughs> um, what am I planning to cook with the tomato? I'm just going to eat it all by myself. <laughs> I've no way to not summer. I kept thinking, I'm not going to have cottage nope. cheese till Tara gets her tomato. Nope. I keep waiting and waiting. Nope. BLT. Uh, nope. I spent eight months and $350 on this tomato. I Mike, did Mike, all. Oh, Mike, I was going to say Mike helped so he could eat some, but he doesn't like tomatoes. So. No, he does not. Thanks. But thank I'll eat his portion for him. Um, let's see. Somebody said I should do taxidermy with my. <laughs> <laughs> Wanda, of course, Wanda. <laughs> Wanda. <laughs> and have it stuck. <laughs> That's good, Wanda. That's really good. Uh, you guys crack. I oh go home goodness. and I read all the comments that you guys have written because they crack me up so much. You know what's so stupid about the whole thing is I have never been able to grow cantaloupe and I've never been able to grow a pumpkin. And what is growing this year? Cantaloupes and pumpkins. pumpkins. I mean, I'm happy because I have cantaloupes and pumpkins. I'm not kidding, guys. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I have 20 tomato plants. 
And this is what I'm going <laughs> 20. I mean, I have some that are green and I think I will get a few more, but we're not going to be dehydrating anything. Mm -hmm. There's no way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pathetic turnips i'm not joking it wasn't even the size of a large so marble if the apocalypse comes <laughs> i ain't gonna be eating tomatoes that's for sure <laughs> um but uh why didn't the vegetables grow i don't know but it's not me no because it's not me i was driving downtown <laughs> and yeah none of last the year they had doing... petunias and last year's those petunias were hanging down yeah. what they Six, seven feet hanging down. They were as posts. big as our dining room table. Oh, here. monster, yeah. monster big things. And they were mm -hmm. hanging down. They're just these little piddly things yeah. this year. So it wasn't tar. Now, I did notice my impatience on the front porch are looking pretty good. I don't, well, Christy she says. She teases me that I can't grow anything. So that's wow. why I had to say Christy that. says, my flowers are gorgeous. Thank you. So actually, they're not as pretty as they, they were. Yeah, they really they are. weren't. As Thank you. But. I have had to fight, yeah. and this morning I found a stupid deer had shaved off all my geraniums again because I forgot to put down my blood meal. And um, but I just fertilize and I use compost. I just fertilize. But I yeah. was I was coming down Tara's driveway. Speaking of deer, I had to sit for five minutes waiting for turkeys to walk across the driveway, <laughs> so I could yeah. park. Oh, oh why didn't the vegetables grow? The, oh, so I don't know what the problem was. Everybody's I think, had, a lot of people had trouble. I think what the issue is, it did not warm up until the third week of June. Mm -hmm. I started planting the last week of May, but it it's a Charlie Brown garden. <laughs> Charlie so, Brown garden. That's Wanda. for sure. <laughs> but I started planting the last week of May. It didn't warm up until the third week of June. We had hail, I think. The second or the third, it might have been that third week when we had the hail. And then um, then it went from really, really cold to super hot. Mm -hmm. And it your plants weak, don't weak. like that. And I think my tomatoes just, once they finally got growing, they just weren't setting um, fruit because it was over 100 for like days and days and days. We had over 100 here, mm -hmm. and that's not normal. I mean, we're here. talking 103 was one yeah. day, and they were supposed to, they yeah. predicted 107 one day. I don't know if it made And it then up. to put it in perspective, two days later, not even 36 hours later, we went from 103 down to 37. Mm -hmm. And it snowed on the mountain. And it snowed, snowed on the mountain. mountain. Yeah. And so honestly, I think it's just the weather. Uh, I think, and no, they're not spraying us with anything. <laughs> they may be doing that somewhere, but I know they're not doing it here. But <laughs> they um, they just don't like fluctuations yeah, like that. Temperature. It's just too much. I mean, how would you like it if you got dunked in boiling bathtub and then they threw you in a cold shower <laughs> and they threw you back into a boiling bathtub. I mean, you know, it's kind it's of like... your growth, too. <laughs> you know, what are you supposed to do? But everybody uh, says um, says that it's really, really bad here. So it's they're begging to buy tomatoes on our buy and sell groups, and nobody's... Nobody has them. Nobody has them. Last year, they were selling bushels and bushels Tons and bushels. Of them. Mm -hmm. Of tomatoes and I thought I would have tons and I would sell all of them honestly I thought I would sell so many that I'd have enough money to buy the supplies for a greenhouse and I didn't so Laura says in western New York we had no rain her well went dry for three weeks oh Ooh, wow that's not good yeah I know it's that's bad uh, Julie says, I think Tara needs venison stew now. You better believe it. <laughs> and well, the little rabbits, those turds, they're tearing down my garden fence. And I put up some landscape fabric because I didn't have any metal uh, fencing. And the little turds keep tearing down my landscape fabric. Well, like I said, the turkeys were walking across the street. There was three huge turkeys. And I thought, can I bump them all three off? And then we could give... For Thanksgiving. Yeah, for Thanksgiving and Christmas I'll and everything. We'd have to clean it. I'm not kidding. You guys should see them. They're we, huge they're turkeys. Huge, yeah. And they were just walking across her uh -huh. driveway. I couldn't get in to park at the garage. Thinking, they, can we hit it with a... Well, we did pretty good target practice 
the other day. You can maybe shoot one. You might be able to shoot one. Um, you wouldn't have the guts to. No, you mean. Well, if you I were would. starving, if you were starving, I, I hit would. I would. mice with a hammer, mother. Yeah, that's true. I think true. I could <gasps> shoot a turkey. Did we tell you that story? <laughs> oh, my goodness. She was living in Springfield out in, in a field in this little house. And she called me on the phone. She'd had mice after mice after mice in the house. She tried everything to get rid of these things. Well, Okay, to my defense, it was my stupidity because I left the back door open for the dog to go in and out because I didn't want to keep open it for him. And so the mice came in and were eating his dog food under the sink. Yes. Well, she called me on the phone and she's sobbing <laughs> and she's crying. And she said, I have got hundreds of little mice everywhere and I can't get, ri get rid of them. And pretty soon I hear boom, boom. Boom. Well, what first I said, I think I'll get the vacuum and suck them up in the vacuum. And mom's said, like, no. no. <laughs> and so then I, and I said, what are you doing? She said, I'm hitting them on the head with a hammer. And she's pounding and pounding. Oh, my! I'm, I'm always on the end of the telephone line with my grandkids having a car wreck or my daughter killing something weird happening. And I'm sitting there. What can I do about any of this? Sorry, left right. <laughs> Are you afraid to sleep, dear? <laughs> you better not fight with her tonight, Michael. Uh, Creative says, what ideas do do to do with a lot of granny smith apples send them over here please because i've been trying to find apples oh man i would not even apples this year i don't know if you have a dehydrator i love dehydrating yeah. apples make and apple I would sauce do out of them you can you freeze can apple yeah, sauce don't say. can them slice them put them in lemon water and freeze them you can make apple pie filling mike put the link in there for her for the apple pie filling dining on a dime volume one has apple butter apple pie filling that you can freeze and then at Thanksgiving, you just dump it in the pie and bake it. It's really good. Freeze yeah. it in a pie tin and yep. pop it out and then put it in a plastic yep. bag. The pie post is fine. Yeah. And the thing that I found out one year, I had so many apples. I took the whole apple. I washed them off, took the whole apple and put them all in the freezer because I didn't have time to even slice them or anything. And I put them in the freezer and I, I thought, what am I going to, you know, what are they going to do? I didn't have any idea. And I got them out and I washed them under warm water after I took them out because they were so cold to hold. I thought I'd warm them up before I cut them to see what they look like. And the peel just slid right off. I thought, oh my goodness, this is nice. Well, they were kind of uh, not really too brown. They really didn't get too brown. But what I did was I just cut them then and got the seeds out and I made them into applesauce and they made the best applesauce. So I didn't even do anything mm -hmm. special. And if you, if you guys are doing anything with apples, you can do the lemon juice, but if you don't have lemon juice on hand, I never use lemon juice anymore. I sprinkle, oh, I have a big mixing bowl and I put about a tablespoon of salt in with that water. It doesn't make the apples taste salty. I dunk them in the, the salt water and they don't turn brown. I left them in the refrigerator just to see how long they would go out of the, out of the salt water, how long they'd stay. They went for like four days in the refrigerator without turning brown. And that's what I do when I dehydrate now instead of putting lemon juice because it can get kind of sticky or have a little bit of lemon taste to it. I do the salt water and it works really good. So apple season's coming and that's a good you know, thing to do. Also, I, I just freeze mine in um, freezer bags and just stack them in the freezers how I do it. So here's a tip, guys. Um, all joking aside, <laughs> but when you do have a bumper crop or not even a bumper crop, but when you have a crop, always pick your biggest fruit or vegetable to save the seeds from and use that for next year's because then you'll make sure you always get the biggest uh, biggest fruit for everything. And if you can't put you're, all your fruit up, you're touching. I'm touching it, I know. If you put all your fruit, can't put them all up, go to restaurants and ask them if they'd like to buy your extra, especially yeah. if you're in a small town. And we've yeah. always had, you know, success with that. Okay, so this is a darn tootin' good idea. And it just, let's see, hold on. Where did it, where did it go? Hold on. Somebody, uh, uh, oh shoot. Oh crud. It was a really good idea. Oh, here, here, here. Uh, Trish says next year going to have a fence and put bamboo sticks all around the, sh and they're sharpened and the deer can't jump on them. That's brilliant. 
bamboo is like really super cheap, like super cheap. It's like, I don't know, 10, 20 cents for a bamboo steak when you get them in the big packets. And then if you put it above your fence, the deer won't jump over it. That's they a know really good idea. Pointy? How do they tell they're pointy? I wonder. When they try to jump over and it stabs them. It won't hurt them. Oh, it's just a little bamboo stick. It'd oh. be like a needle. Oh, but still, that's a great idea. Because it's not very expensive to do then. Yeah, that's a great idea. I think I'm going to do that. The other thing that Can I you had make heard short ones for the rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I heard was to take fishing line and string it four feet above your. Like I have a four foot fence, so string it six to eight feet, however tall. Okay, so four more feet or two more feet. And string fishing line every four or five inches and then put little flags on there. And they touch the fishing line with their nose and they don't like it. So I'm going to try that next year, well, too. You can try. I try all the above. Just this year, I just had so many problems. I, I just got to the point where around the middle of July, I'm just like, forget it. <laughs> I'm going to keep watering, but I wasn't going to um, going to go to any human what extra human effort <laughs> is that what i'm trying to say Deborah says for my first time joining how do i how do i go about ordering the cookbook uh to order the cookbooks just go to livingonadime.com right here and the link is in the description below um but livingonadime.com click on the shop and they're 25 percent off right now um let's see holy cow Gail says, keeping chickens for eggs cost me $10 a dozen. I think I won't use eggs oh, for wow. that. Oh, wow, yeah. I would just use applesauce or something else for eggs. Holy moly, that's crazy expensive. Mm -hmm. And I've heard, I mean, I know chicken feed has gone up. I mean, mm -hmm. I've heard that. So um, Irish Spring does work, Cindy, although um, it does dissolve in the rain. And we have a automatic sprinkler system. So I wasn't sure if it would work here because I was afraid that the sprinklers would dissolve it, but I don't know, maybe. Uh, Karen said we had a mouse sitting on the trap eating the cheese and peanut butter and my brother took his PB cut and shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. It turned violent real quick. Uh, uh -huh. Diana loves your freeze, the pie filling in the pie tin. Yeah. Tip. That's brilliant, she said. Um, uh, Raina, so the barbecue meatballs recipe in dining volume one is, so we have three indexes in here. So make sure you got the right index. It is on page beef barbecue 219 page two here. We'll just go straight over and you can see it. Whoops. Wrong one. Not the meatballs. 220 right there see it okay that's the barbecued meatballs that barbecue sauce is so good <sighs> let's see. and that's good too that if you run if you can't get barbecue sauce at the store mm -hmm. you most of those ingredients except for maybe the liquid smoke but yeah. most of the ingredients you will have on hand that's yeah. why i keep liquid liquid smoke Kelly says she just received her dining and dining volume to 25% off right now. She made the peach tea, caramel frappe, and four ingredient no need bread. And my family has loved everything I've made. That is wonderful. Guys, that's one thing about our cookbooks, including our gluten free, dairy free. I tested every single recipe in this book. I tested every single one. And let me tell you, I went through 40 different variations of sandwich bread to get the perfect gluten-free sandwich bread. You will never buy gluten-free sandwich bread and it only costs like a dollar 50 to make. So it's super, super cheap compared to paying seven to $10 at the store. So if you are gluten-free, dairy-free, remember that. I can't remember what recipe we put for the peach tea in there, but mm -hmm. what I do to make uh, the fruit tea, tea, it might be what we put in there is usually to make a container, my container of tea, I use two of the small tea bags, three small tea bags. And then, of course, then I put sugar in mine too. But then if I want it flavored, I use two regular small tea bags and I take a peach tea bag and 
use that. And so it gets just the right amount of peach flavor, or you can use a raspberry tea. Um, by doing it that way, uh, you don't, instead of using all peach tea, the peach uh, tea bags are a little bit more expensive. So by doing it that way, you still get the peach tea, but uh, you can stretch your money a little bit more. And, and is, don't forget to use like your canned fruit juice. Yeah, your canned fruit your, juice. Like your canned peaches, take the juice from that and use it in your muffins. Use it in your teas, and it will flavor those really good also. I also grind up my apple peels when I dehydrate my apples. I take those apple peels and grind them up into a fine powder, and I give them to Tara to put in uh, her hot tea for apple-flavored tea. And another thing, uh, I, didn't see, I didn't see what he said, but another thing is um, the powder stuff like that. Grind it up if you do if you're dehydrated. Grind up the the powder things like the apple peels, and you can put it in like your banana bread. Sprinkle it on your oatmeal, and it gives you a little bit more vitamins. Like if you need the more the extra oomph and that type of thing, and you can use that powder. Don't just throw those peels away. You can use them that way. Um, Linda, buy Dining on a Diet Volume One first if you just want one book. Diana by volume one. It's got all the basics in it and it's the best one to start with. Excuse me. John. Um, oh, Rob. Hey, Rob. Oh, we're his favorite YouTube family. You're our favorite. Little, well, I can't say you're my favorite. You're my second favorite little house man. My son has to be my first favorite. Little. Yeah, her son. But you're my favorite little house non -family person member. in Missouri. <laughs> uh, that sounded weird. My first. My favorite little house person. <laughs> I'm not being politically correct. I don't know. Oh, um, <coughs> let's see. John says for your garden, this is a good tip. I might try this. To loosely lay mesh around the ground. Now, I'd have to put rocks or something down because here it would blow away. But around the ground in front of the fences because it spooks the deer when they step on it and it snags their hooves. That is a great idea. Hmm. Although, well, I was wondering if it would deter yeah, the rabbits and the, the raccoons. Yeah, the raccoons too. I think you um, that hard um, kind of chicken wire, not chicken wire, but that hard stuff with the square marks on it. Huh? Lay mesh on the ground. What kind of mesh? Good. Okay, John, tell us what kind of mesh do you mean? I was thinking like. I was thinking like fabric mesh, oh, but maybe you're meaning that they have plastic mesh. Now, maybe see, you're meaning plastic. I when don't know. I save things, I get some stuff like that sometimes in my packaging. So I save those things. And yeah. there, here's an example of where we, we would be using that. Yeah. Leslie, what do you think of low carb keto diet? I have not known one person who has stayed on it who has done it, who has been able to maintain their weight afterwards. And the kidney doctor, when we took our son to the kidney doctor, said it's not a good diet to be on. So he said it's pretty dangerous, actually. So um, let's see when you, let's see. Uh, Teresa, I guess, throw your Bible question out there real quick if you want. Uh, let's see, Jill, when you freeze the apple pie filling in the pie tin, do you defrost it in a separate container? No, you just throw it straight in the oven. Yeah, I just pop it out of the pie. Oh, well, what I do is I freeze it in the pie tin and then I pop it out while it's still frozen and put it in a plastic bag. And then I stack several of them up. Then when I get ready to do the pie, I put the pie crust in and I pull it out of the plastic bag and just clump the whole thing. I can clump the whole thing in there if you want to do it that way. Now, I, I did that for a long time. If you're going to freeze it like that, already pie shaped, you can. What I started doing, though, is... I like putting my pie filling in the microwave and cooking it for three minutes before I put it into my pie crust because that way the filling gets mostly cooked. But if she's using the cooked, you told her to use the cooked, mm -hmm. didn't you? So this would already be cooked, so you wouldn't have to do that. So all you do, put your pie crust in the thing and plop that shaped, pie-shaped, frozen apple stuff right on top of it mm -hmm. and then bake it. By the way, guys, I'm not frowning at mom. 
We have a light right yeah. here that's really bright. You guys think Tara frowns and all the time, but we have these really, really bright lights. I can't see. And she's trying to look at the, the <laughs> read the words. Squinting she's squinting, yeah, yeah, to look at the words and so, looking over at Michael. So the light is is causing me. Her you know eyes are even watering. Yeah. yeah. So that's I'm, and I'm having major allergy issues too. Uh, okay, let's see. Is is the gluten free way? Did I explain that cheaper right there, okay. or about the so? I don't know if you're talking about our cookbook. So our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook, it's way cheaper to like make your homemade bread and your cakes and that than buying them gluten-free. Like I'm talking, I don't know how much percent is that? A thousand percent. It's, it's like a dollar 50 to make the gluten-free bread and it's anywhere from seven to $10 to buy it at the store. So whatever percentage that is, but, um, and like gluten-free cakes and pizza crust, Oh my goodness, you can make gluten-free pizza crust for 75 cents and at the store it's like six bucks. So yeah, it's way, way cheaper um, to make your own. Let's see, John says use the soft black mesh. Yeah, that's what I thought mm -hmm. for supporting plants. That's what I thought. Do we have any of that? I don't know, but I can tell you some dumpsters are going to be having Tara's name mm -hmm. on them. I'm going to look for that and try it. That's a really good idea. My only hesitation is going out there and finding a rabbit trapped in it. You know? <laughs> and you having to take it out. <laughs> uh, does a dehydrator use a lot of electricity? Mm -hmm. I it uses, don't know I, it does. I have run mine for days, and yeah. it doesn't affect my electricity at all. It's so low that, um, no, it doesn't. Oh, thanks, Trish. She says, this channel and family is best is the best so blessed with so much information to help us live on a dime thank you You're you welcome. guys are so sweet so here's what's funny about my son's little house so right now he's in an rv but he just bought a shed and he's gonna make a little a tiny house out of it so i sent him your videos i sent him <laughs> your videos um let's see anybody ever use carrot tops nope i use them for compost well except for when the rabbits and birds eat them um <laughs> which happened this year i planted all these beautiful rainbow carrots didn't get one not even one i was so mad um human hair clippings clipped around the garden yeah but we don't all i cut is mike's hair now so i don't have that many hair clippings you had a lot of mine last week well true yeah <laughs> that's true oh and i just dumped it off the deck so maybe they won't eat those they plants might on not the deck. That's a good she idea. cut my hair and yeah. Dave looked over and she was tossing it off the deck and Dave looked over. He said, oh, mom, that's gross. There's Nan hair all over every place. <laughs> Actually, Mike's grandma used to do that. And I was like, <laughs> OK, that's kind of gross having hair all over your bushes in the front yard. <laughs> I'm sorry. There is a there's a point. And I think that's it for me. But um. But uh, anyway, um, okay. Now, as far as keto goes, I mean, being 350 pounds, if you eat keto and it helps you lose weight and you can keep it off, that's fine. And as we told the doctor, being 350 pounds overweight is just as dangerous as being on a keto diet. So it's probably safer for you to be on a keto diet than to be 350 pounds overweight. So you just decide what you want to do. I'm just telling you what the doctor told us. And I'm just telling you my experience. So, yeah, he did say nobody over 40 should be on. It's just too hard on your um, um, on your kidneys. Uh, okay. If you're gluten-free but not dairy-free, just use butter and milk instead of the rice milk. Then the margarine that I use in here is a shortening. You can do that. It's, it's totally interchangeable. So, um, let's see. Um, Tanya's question about compost. I did not. Let me see real quick. What is Tanya's question about? Do you have a compost video? I tried making some and failed epically. I do have a compost, mm. but I don't know how you failed. All you do is just dump it in a pile and let it rot for a year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you don't put meat. Don't you don't put, put bread. It's just like green and brown. So you just Leaves, need green and brown. grass, vegetables. You need to have half green and half brown for ideal. For I do, it to go the quickest. But. I do coffee grounds too. I put my coffee grounds yeah. and tea bags in there. Yeah. So, and um, you know what? If you have a flower bed or a garden, 
just dump them on top of that. I do that a lot of times, you know. I just, just bury my fruits and vegetables straight in the garden and just let them compost in place. Yeah, you don't even have to have the special pile if yeah. you don't want to. But I do have a big compost pile for like at the end of the season when everything, you can't bury it all at the end of yeah, the season. Yeah, and but. one thing nice too about having the pile is I would use it in my potted plants if I needed dirt. I didn't have to go buy special potting soil or anything. I would just use my yeah. compost pile. Barbara, I use dairy-free in the book, but you don't have to use dairy-free uh, cheese. It can be regular cheese. Um, Any recipes like that, you if you have milk, if we have milk in our regular cookbook, you can exchange it for another type of milk. You know, those types of things you can exchange out really easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, now let's see. When you clean your brush, save your hair. Yeah, I should, I guess. Because my hair has just been falling out like crazy. I don't know what my hair problem is lately. Mine has too. I it's just been, was, it's was driving weird. me nuts because it'll land on my yeah, arm and it tickles. And I think it's a mosquito. I know. I've been having hand. the same trouble just and, recently. Um, Maybe yeah. we can't handle the heat and the cold like the vegetables. And says our books are full books. Okay, so... Somebody asked about the full package books. I'm not quite sure what the question is. If you mean our ebook collection, those are not all print books. They're just ebooks. The only print books we have are Dining One and Two, Dining on a Dine Volume One and Two, and Gluten Free, Dairy Free. And then um, sometimes we have our planners in stock, and other times we don't. So <laughs> um, those are the only ones that we have right now. Uh, let's and guys, see. If you look at the ebooks, that we really, I've always been tickled with our ebooks because we pack at least as much, if if not more, in those ebooks that we do with the cookbooks. You know, so there's a lot like the laundry ones and stuff like that. We put a lot of weird information that's unusual in there. So yeah, so the ninety nine dollar ebook set is um, all ebooks. You really get a lot of bang um, for your buck. Okay, Jennifer Weber. <laughs> hi jennifer she said i should auction off the two so here we go one thousand dollar one thousand dollar one thousand dollar two thousand dollar two thousand dollar two thousand three thousand dollars three thousand dollars three thousand dollars five thousand dollars five thousand dollars who's gonna give me seven thousand dollars oh are you gonna tell me about my chair? i'm sure it's worthy of seven thousand i'm auctioning oh, oh i'm sorry my tomato mother i'm sorry that just reminded me. Oh, that's a great idea. Okay, show them your Amish I think chair. It's helping. I think it's helping. You want to see the famous Amish chair? Tara surprised me last <laughs> week when she came back from the Except Amish. Except I'm play. a failure as a daughter. Why? Because it's too sh too. Uh, oh, no, high. it's working now with the foot yeah. thing. Oh, with the foot yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, as okay. a matter of fact, I've not felt so good. How do I? Now, don't get excited, guys. It's nothing, but you have to sit in it. We haven't even had Michael sit in it. Can they see it? Uh, You'll have to lift it up. No, turn it. Turn it, turn it to, to the side. Uh, can you see the can back? Can you see the curve here? Yeah, that's why she likes uh, it. Even the yeah. seat has an indentation. Yeah. You don't have to wear your own indentation in the seat. That's the famous Amish chair. It's hard to explain because when you sit back, there's something about that curve that just braces your back in such a way it, it feels like you're just the upper part of your body's just been lifted off of you mm -hmm. so i went down to the amish last uh week i was going to see if they would let me interview them and i did interview them they wouldn't do it on camera but um i did interview them which by the way friday's show is prepping the amish way and we're having um one of my fellow youtubers who's formerly amish on talking about prepping um the amish way but I picked one up for mom and uh, you think it's helping, huh? Oh, I can tell it's helping. See, usually when we do a, a, like a three hour live stream, even two to three hours, my feet get almost completely numb by the time I'm standing yeah. up, you know, because uh, none of the chairs are uh, comfortable enough. But this really made a difference. So um, interesting. Crazy Cat Lady says a lot of people after getting that thing going around have been losing their hair. Maybe that's why. It could be then, yeah. That could be. Because We've had I wondered three about... Three times? Four times? I, I know, wondered about times. that because when we first got... I thought of that the other day. When we first got sick with chronic fatigue, I thought I was going to go bald. Do you remember that? We did lose our hair when we first got sick with chronic fatigue. And what's interesting is a lot of the symptoms people are having from this illness that went around... It's the exact same things we've had with chronic fatigue, although ours is maybe in some cases even worse. The brain fog 
and that type of thing. And I think, I think it's the same. See, the chronic fatigue syndrome was caused by a virus and it just attacked different parts of our body. And the hair falling out was one of them. The brain fog's another one. And I'm noticing a lot of people that's had that illness has a lot of our symptoms. So, um, what do we think of the Mediterranean diet? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a really good diet. I can't do it cause I don't do dairy. I mean, I can do goat milk, but, um, I don't do dairy, dairy, uh, yes, mom does take a vitamin supplement. I just so. take one multivitamin and that's, that's it. Um, Although I don't even take it half the time, I have to confess, but. Um, there is no name for the Amish. Yeah, I mean, you can just type in Amish chair and get it online anywhere. The, these are nothing. As a matter of fact, I don't even think the Amish make them. I, they are too precise. Well, first of all, if the Amish make them, they're using power tools. They're not using yeah, They're not okay. using hand tools. No. These are too precisely made. But you can just Google Amish chair. And I found the same ones online. Our people here order them from Wisconsin and have them shipped in. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even make them. And so they're just, I think there's an Amish company that makes all of them. What it is about it is the shape of the chair, the, the way the design is, I think is what makes it, you know. Yeah. It's the, it's the shape and the design mm -hmm. that, um, and I was thinking about getting me one next time we go down there, um, and do that. Uh, okay. So, huh? Okay. Go ahead real quick. If you want, uh, some Amish use power. Well, so that's the thing. <laughs> We're going to talk about this on Friday, <laughs> but Kimberly says some Amish use power tools. They just use a generator. Yeah. So I go, <laughs> they've got their generator running with the power tools. They've got their solar panels running the freezer. <laughs> their kids are carrying around dolls that are singing with batteries. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the other, there was another thing. Oh, oh yeah. They have a cell phone. It just stays outside of the house. Um, and I'm like, okay. Oh, and they can ride on, they can ride on buses, trains, and cars, but not planes. Cause there's some sort of Bible verse that says you're not supposed to go on planes. They say, they say. didn't give me the Bible verse. I was, I was very nice. Don't worry. I just found all these things very interesting. <laughs> and Oh, Amish Potato is on here. He's the one that I'm interviewing on Friday. Yay! CJ's on here. And so then, even with that, I found out, so they had a sign on the road, and I said, you know, you should, I, another lady, another lady um, owns one section, and then this lady owns another portion of it. And I was talking to the other lady, and I said, you should tell her to make her sign bigger. She said, well... She said she kind of just went on the farmer's field and put it up without asking. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well, maybe she shouldn't make it bigger <laughs> because he didn't even know. She didn't even ask to put it up there. <laughs> so, yeah. So CJ from Amish Potato, guys, he's the one that's going to be on here. I love CJ. Um, in case you're wondering, he used to be Amish and he moved to Idaho. And that's why it was called the Amish potato. But then he disappeared for like two months. And the next thing I know, he's living in Michigan. Now, you can't be the Amish potato in Michigan. Let's see. What would you be? Now you're cheese. the. No. Well, yeah. You're the Amish, Amish cheese, cheese. Or maybe you're the Amish maple leaf now. <laughs> no, that's Canada. Right Wisconsin. Cheese oh, is Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, is you're that right. Where would you say he was? I Michigan. Was, oh, Michigan. I thought Let's you see, said what Wisconsin. Else? Oh, you're the Amish pothole. <laughs> <laughs> Tar said they have so many potholes in Michigan. I outdid myself on that one. You are now the Amish pothole. You have to change your name to the Amish pothole. Oh, you're going to get yourself in trouble <laughs> at the rate you're going. <laughs> oh, oh goodness i'm gonna choke in my water <laughs> okay denise how do you get diagnosed for cfs chronic fatigue syndrome it's just an elimination they test you for thyroid and all kinds of stuff and when you don't have anything then you have cfs is what it amounts to uh julie did you see my question about substituting applesauce for oil yes you can do that mm -hmm. yes it works 
Uh, what do we use for face moisturizer? I just use Oil of Olay, just the cheapy with sunscreen. That's all I've used for 30 yeah, years now. For moisturizer. For mm -hmm. moisturizer, I just use the same, um, same one. And we oh, well, do have a um, makeup thing. A makeup we, video. A makeup yeah. video that tells everything we yeah. use on our YouTube channel. So the Amish potato who is changing to the Amish pothole <laughs> says... <laughs> <laughs> Amish furniture makers in the northern Indiana community make different styles of chairs and use full electric shops with power tools. Yeah. I'm like, this is way, there's no way this is handmade. Yeah. There's no way. I mean, I've seen people who are really good craftsmen doing handmade stuff and it's still, it's, it, you can tell it's handmade, which is fine. I actually like the handmade look. I want a handmade farm table. Oh, I found one the other day at the chiropractor. I was like, dude, will you sell me that? But mm -hmm. his friend made it for him. So, but, um, okay, let's. See. I feel yeah. guilty about Tar getting you a chair for this much, but it's so comfortable that it's nicer to me than a recliner or something <laughs> like that. So I think, you know, if you can get something that, that that's that comfortable, I think it's worth it. And it's hot up in my legs too. So, okay, well, this is another good one. He said he could be the Amish mitten. I still <laughs> like the Amish bottle better. <laughs> <laughs> still think that's better. Just saying. Yeah. 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 Yes. You know. I think you need to ask Miranda what she thinks on that. <laughs> she gets the final phone. <laughs> or your wife, if she's driving to work, she's going to say you're the only <laughs> Believe me, I loved Michigan. It was so pretty. You could not pay me a million dollars to live there. You, I mean, my friend, she went through five tires. My friend that I stayed with there, I think it was, I can't remember the exact number. It was like five tires in five months or something from hitting potholes. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. It was, uh, it was some ridiculous Bad. amount like that. So Penny, maybe if I'm wrong, you could put it in there, but it was something close to that. <laughs> I mean, it was just absolutely crazy. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, da -da, da -da, da -da. to Amish cheesy potato. <laughs> that would be good. Um, all right. I'm trying to, oh, here it is. Sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, how do you clean your hair with baking soda? So we have a video. Do we have a video? We have a, a Michael put the link to the uh, website post on it, but and I, I explain how to do it. All that you do is I put a tablespoon of baking soda in an eight ounce glass fill it up with warm water in the shower. I stir it up with my hands so it gets mixed up a little bit and just rinse my hair first, get my hair wet, pour it all over, rub it in like you do shampoo, just use it like shampoo and then rinse it out. And you have, yeah. to, sometimes there's a little bit of a, some people have um, it, your, your hair starts, your hair produces more oil when you shampoo with regular shampoo, it strips it. So your hair produces a whole bunch more oil trying to make up for it. And so every time you shampoo it, it keeps stripping and it makes even more oil. When you use a baking soda, it doesn't strip your hair. So it doesn't produce as much oil, but it takes like a couple of shampoos yeah. like that for it to get balanced out then and stop producing the oil if you have oily hair. But I've used it for years now and I just love it. And yeah, the poo-free yeah. post. And another thing for people that are wanting to do prepping ideas, it's especially good because if my baking soda gets bad, it's really nice because I'll just use it for shampoo or cleaning or uh, something like that. But does or baking brushing soda my teeth. Go bad? Well, to raise the muffins. No, that's baking powder. Yeah, it does. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't fo foam up and do everything. So, you know, you can use it for that then too. That's why I keep baking uh, soda for my prepping stuff because anything that can do more than one thing is much better than trying to keep, you know, a whole bunch of three different things. Our viewers are going to rename you, CJ. <laughs> Somebody said, oh, shoot, it went off the screen. They said the Amish holy potato. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Sarah, I did not see That's your question about what type of vitamin to take that lasts for years. Uh, I don't know which one, but I mean, most of them probably last a really long time. But now, they have done some studies know, so. a couple of years back that says most medicines 
last for decades. Yeah. So I wouldn't worry about I your but... your medicine or vitamins expiring mm-hmm. at all. It'll take yeah. it'll take a good 20 years or more for any of those things yeah. to expire. Uh, Laura says, thank you for allowing me to get the Bible. She had surgery and can't use her left hand. So that's helpful for her. Oh, good. You guys need a free Bible. We give Bibles for free. Livingonadime.com, go to the shop, click on free Bible. You can use the coupon code if you can't afford it, and we will just send it to you for free. We are sending out a lot of Bibles now, so um, please go get one. Um, And if you guys are wondering why we took down the donation thing, we had several very large donations, and so we took it down until we get caught up with ordering Bibles for the amount of donations that came in. Cause we always try to make sure that we never use um, Bible donation money for anything. Well, we don't use Bible donation money for anything other than buying Bibles. And so when we have used that up, we will put it back on there. So I'm sorry for those of you who want to donate, but you know, please donate to like um, Charles Stanley or your local women's crisis center or a children's home or, um, uh, like churches that drill water wells and give kids shoes, things like that is where we used to do our tithe. Also when we, um, well, I'm not saying it was your tithe, but you know, donate to when we, uh, when we were donating to some of those things. Um, let's see. We have, uh, how do we stay so young looking? I don't know. (laughs) It's honestly, it's three things. It's genetics, not smoking and drinking. I really think it is. You know, um, my grandmother's 94 and she looks like she's 92. No, no. I mean, she, I mean, grandma probably doesn't look more than what, 80, 75 or 80 probably. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't look, but she looks really young too. Um, but you know, if you do drink and smoke, like when you smoke and you pucker up, it causes wrinkles around in your face Mm -hmm. and things like that. And so that's, those things do make a difference. Yeah, uh, Sandy Eat says, lots of chocolate and don't exercise too. <laughs> Sandy was reading on prepping the other day and it said most medication pres- prescriptions and OTCs last 15 years yeah. past the date. Yeah, I would say, yeah, 15 to 20 yeah. years. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Kimberly says the Amish did our metal roof and their Mennonite coven- cover- cousins did the covered gutters all for about $10,000, which is way less than going right in our area. They were wonderful people to work with. Great workmanship. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah do. I mean, I hear they, they have really, do good, really workmanship. good workmanship. Um, mm-hmm. And they seem like really nice. Well, oh, uh, <laughs> they seem like uh, <laughs> nice people, at least the ones that I was talking to. Although it was, it was kind of sad because they had just moved here from the ones that I was talking to. They had just moved here from. Uh, where did I say Wisconsin? Wisconsin. And um, she had eight kids. Of course, she. Of course, when I said, "How many kids do you have?" She gave me this look like, "Oh no, I don't want to tell you." And she said, "Well, I have eight. I said, "Oh, I have four, and I had five eventually." I said, "So I'm okay with big families." <laughs> so I said, "Don't worry about it." And she's like, "Okay," but I felt really bad because the kids they had just moved here last year, and and the little girl was reading. Um, miss oh which mystery you know it's one of the kids is she was like 12 one of the little kids mystery chapter books and um she was like oh yeah but we had to get rid of all our books when we moved and we don't have any books at our homeschool library here so we have to keep reading the same ones over and over again and <laughs> and uh, i said well i'll look for you some and um bring mike and i are, are going to denver in a couple of weeks and and i was like well i'll take you some or I'll, I'll look for some. Well, lady just happened to have some on free, free on, on Facebook, uh, the swap thing. And so I picked those up for because I know what it's like to be a reader. Not and you got to have the same books, book over yeah. and over again. So we got him some, got our few books for, uh, <laughs> for reading. But um, so many different Amish with everyone having their own rules. However, the two districts that we have on our road believe in being born again, not all Amish. Yeah, that's actually very rare, Carolyn, uh, that most, the majority of the Amish population do aren't really a true Christian religion. Um, no, and so we're going to talk with that with CJ on Friday at 2.30, guys. We're going to be live 2.30 Friday um, talking about prepping the Amish way 
with him. And just answering some of your questions. I asked you guys later if, or a couple of weeks ago, what you would like to know if I was able to interview them. And so I took all those questions and CJ, um, he's back there living now where his parents and brothers and sisters are and everything. And so um, he can tell us, you know, if things have changed or if they're the same. Um, Connie says hair loss is common in the summer. This has been going on for quite mm -hmm. a while for me. It's, it's been at least six months driving me, me nuts. Um, and I'm just shedding all over. Um, and I put baking soda in my canning jar and it sounded like a gun going off when I opened it. I didn't vacuum it and I didn't use any absorbers in it. Why would it do like that? I don't know. I don't know. I never Did you that. move? Cause now if you move Sometimes and you go from a low pressure. altitude to high altitude, I don't know why. Yeah, if that. you guys travel like from Kansas yeah. to Colorado or something, put your stuff in plastic bags yeah. because that stuff explode. will explode yeah. out. Uh, what time zone? So 2.30 Mountain, 4.30 Eastern. We're going to be on Friday, okay? 2.30 Mountain, 4.30 Eastern. We are trying a new thing for September, doing all of our shows live. But we're trying two different times to see how it works. And oh my goodness. What? Bernie has our original cookbook, Not Just Beans, the first edition. <laughs> 1999. Girlfriend, when I die, you put that thing on eBay. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be worth a hundred dollars. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, actually, yeah, people on eBay and Amazon sell it for seven hundred to nine hundred dollars. It's ridiculous. Um, why would you save your hair just to keep the deer out of the yard is what they were talking yeah. about. So deer don't like the yeah, smell of the that. human hair. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, all right, guys, check out our Dunning on a Dime cookbooks. 25% off right now, livingonadime.com. Also, if you need a Bible, please go livingonadime.com and grab our Bibles. And Donna just got her cookbook tonight. Yay. Mm. And um, I did might get all the links in there. Might got the links in there. Have a good night, guys. We will Bye -bye, see you guys. guys. Next nice time. seeing you again. Bye.